Hello, everyone. It's good to see lots of familiar faces. And uh, I'll, I'll go quite fast over the first few bits, because you probably, probably have heard of what, what we do. But I thought I'd just give a, like, a little update on what we've been kind of working on since I'm not sure when I was here that last two, two years ago or so. Um, so yeah, so here with Tris, Tris and Lee. And we both work full time on the Open Energy Monitor project. So it's a project to develop open source uh, energy monitoring tools. Um, and so we got inspired to set up the project. Oh, can I just put a little light off? Is that going to be OK for the video? There we go. Um, so yeah, we're inspired to set, set up the project because uh, we're interested to try and better understand um, our energy consumption and uh, generation and make informed decisions um, with regard to how, how we use our energy and how we can optimize our energy, energy, energy systems. Uh, so that's the, the system in its current, current state. Um, we've got various R RF wireless nodes, um, <coughs> web-connected base station, and a cloud-based, web-based login and graphing um, service. And, um, these are the current hardware units, um, all, all open hardware, all based on mainly on Arduino um, for the, the, the wireless nodes. And we used a Raspberry Pi and st standard Raspberry Pi software for the, for the base station. Um, so our, our sort of latest unit is combining the base station and the Energy monitoring node to to all in one into a unit we call the Emon Pi, which is a Raspberry Pi based um, energy monitoring unit, um, and it can also receive other data from other RF units such as uh, temperature <coughs> temperature and humidity nodes, um, but, but as well as like posting to EmonCMS.org our cloud based uh, service, it runs a full web server and runs Emon CMS locally. So if you wanted to, you can keep, you know, keep your data all, uh, you know, all, all in-house. Um, but I'll, t I'll talk more about the software running on, on here um, later on. And this is our original Emon TX G monitoring node, a few more CT channels, um, AC AC adapter <coughs> to do real power calculations and power factor. Um, simple little room temperature node because obviously temperature is very linked to energy consumption. So it's an uh, uh, important thing to, to monitor. And you can also inform, inform like smart thermostat control. So I put, put this in a slide because I thought it might be um, in interest, interest some of you. And certainly when we started designing and building hardware, this seemed like, like the, the most scary thing you could do was go for CE testing, EMC testing, when in fact it wasn't actually too scary at all. Um, although the equipment he uses, um, that's my hand there with a gun you can't quite see, but it's set to eight, eight kilovolts, and I'm like zapping my unit with it to see what, what, what happens. And it caused a reboot, but within a few seconds it fired up again, and that's a, that's a pass. Um, but the, it was great working with, we worked with Cass, Cass Industries in Manchester, and there was, there was really nice guys and it's just, at the end of the day, about good electronic design. And I learned a lot from going there and doing the testing. And all our units passed, so we can put the C mark of approval on it. Um, that's a sort of, they produce a report with lots of like wiggly traces like that. So the red line is what you can't cross to, um, if you go above that, you, you, fail the, you fail the emissions. So that was our, um, you know, what our unit was emitting when it was, when it was running. So, so very interesting. And, I'd say if I was doing that again, I would uh, go for the testing sooner rather than later and just sort of go for a chat with them. Um, and they've seen so many hardware come through their eyes. They'll look at a circuit design or and go, yeah, this is probably OK. Or I'd put a little you know, something in there to um, make, it, you know, make it be able to handle um, RF noise and things. So that was the C. Um, so on the software side of things, um, Tristan's done a lot, a lot of work developing uh, emoncms.org. And uh, emoncms is a login and graphing platform designed primarily for power, but any sort of environmental data, temperature, humidity, um, 
you can, you can, you can throw at it. We run a hosted version at teamoncms.org, um, but it's fully open source. You can download it and run it off any, any Linux server. Um, and we get some amazing community development contributions um, to this, to this uh, part of the project now. And so yeah, once the data is in even CMS, you can do some pretty dashboards showing how much you're how much you're using, and if you've got solar PV, how much you're you using from your solar, how much you're importing, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, and I mentioned the community. Uh, even even though we're quite a small um, organisation, just sort of Tristan and myself, and we have a, a, cu a couple of other people helping us with uh, manufacturing, running the shop. Um, we've got some amazing community members, so um, we get lots of open source contributions from various people over over the world, and which is really um, really nice. And this is an example of, an, of like a community contribution. Someone contacted us saying, "Oh, we've written an Elon CMS Android app. Um, would, would you like it? Can we launch it in the you know, launch it in the Google Play Store?" So, of course, we we welcomed it with open arms. This is in the Google Play Store now. So it's a nice uh, Elon CMS uh, app for Android. Um, so we so we both live and work in North Wales, where we grew up there, and we were. St we're still living there, very happy, very happy to sort of be, be able to do this sort of work and live in what, what is quite a remote, sort of mountainous location, really. And it's fantastic to be able to run an open hardware business from here. And we've always made a thing of trying to manufacture our units in the UK. Um, and now we even manufacture at a factory just down the road from us, 15 minutes down the road from our office. So it's great to pop, be able to pop down, chat with the guys there in Welsh who run the, who run the pick and place lines, like local guys. And it's really great to, you know, it's catch problems early on, um, like a really tight like feedback loop. Um, so we we were inspired to set up the project really to help people save energy and help reduce energy consumption. Um, but we found ourselves manufacturing electronic hardware, which is not a particularly energy low energy intensive thing to do. So we're interested in looking at the embodied energy in our units. And this is going off a, a bit on a tangent, um, but it's something that uh, we're quite interested in. As we were inspired by the, the, the Fair Mouse project that then led on to the Fair Phone project you might have, you might have heard of. Um, you do? Oh, awesome. I've not seen one in the flesh, but that's a fantastic project. Um, amazing. Yeah, and that, that's what actually inspired us to try and do some of this our, ourselves. It's obviously a really complex task with lots of things that feed into it, but we thought we'd, uh, we'd, we'd try and Tristan produced these, uh, these figures. They were taken from data sets that we could get our hands on, which need to be taken with a, a pinch of salt. But it's very interesting um, process to go through and sort of highlighted some things that we thought, um, for example, a, qua a quarter of the entire embodied energy is the power adapters and the sensors and a quarter is the enclosure. And that bit there is all the electronics in there that we manufacture. And from that, almost half of that is the PCB design. So you know, the smaller you can make the PCBs, the better. Um, so we came up with this figure of 40 kilowatt hours per day of, of energy it takes to produce. So assuming uh, if you might be able to get a 5% reduction, maybe more. Um, it should pay for itself in terms of energy. It'll save the amount of energy it um, uh, used to manufacture within three months of it being installed, which is um, good, good, quite a good thing, but it's obviously still room for um, Im improvement. And one thing we do do is we make sure we ship all of our um, power adapters and CTs that we buy in, um, in, in China via to the UK, um, via ocean freight, on a, on, a, on a pallet to make the embodied energy as low as possible, and that's 19 times less energy to ship via ocean than air. Um, but it doesn't stop there. We obviously need to then ship it to our customers. And if a customer happens to be in Australia, then um, in 2014, 5% of our orders went to Australia, and that used as much energy as 75% of, of all, as much energy as all the EU orders, which is 75%. So it's quite a um, quite a lot of energy, um, which kind of made us realise that it doesn't really make sense to ship power adapters and 
from China to the UK and then back to Australia. So maybe we can look at getting a distributor there. Um, if uh, yeah, we get to get more from Australia, but interesting exercise anyway to sort of get a, get a grasp of these sorts of things. Um, that's a bit of a, a bit of a tangent, but uh, it's all it's all related really. Um, so bringing it back to uh, energy monitoring. So now we have the ability to monitor energy, which is great. Um, so sort of think, what are the next steps? How can we make this data useful? Um, how can we use this data to inform decisions that we can, that we can take? So these are some of the questions that we've been asking. So the, f the first few are easy to answer, like how much energy do I use? But things like um, how can I intelligently control my heating? How can I look at uh, uh, when is a good time to do my washing or charge my car today based on grid, grid carbon intensity? Uh, and to do these sorts of things, you often need to interact with other systems and be able to pull in data from other systems, which got us to put more work into how we can make our system as open as possible um, in terms of like APIs and data formats and, and how we can also interface with other systems. So this is where two things you're probably most people are familiar with here, um, MQTT and Node-RED. Um, two amazing tools to come out of IBM and have been calling these two things the, the glue of Internet of Things. You can pretty much connect any Internet of thing, thing to another thing with these two, two things. So we wanted to make um, both, both these things integral to our, to our system. We already used MQTT on the EmonPy, um, but on the latest software stack, we've put effort into making the protocol um, as sort of interoperable as possible with other devices. Um, so the Human Pi runs an open MQTT server, authenticated, but op open port. So any device on the network, if it's got the correct authentication details, can connect in and listen to the, um, to the energy data. And vice versa, if you want to post anything to Human CMS, you can just post to this MQTT um, server running on the Human Pi, and it'll appear in Human CMS. Um, and the latest software stack we we uh, we build for the Human Pi, <coughs> which is a pre-built SD card image, has got um, Node-RED and OpenHab, which is an open source home uh, automation system, all running and configured um, as standard on the Human Pi. So, if you do want to use Node-RED to say um, pull in data from somewhere exotic, or I use it to pull weather data from weather underground to then feed it into Human CMS, it, that was just a, a few drag and drops away. Um, so we want to make it as easy as possible for people to explore doing these sorts of these sorts of things. Um, and also running out the box is a Lightwave RF um, plug control, um, which to enable to control RF RF plugs to switch appliances on and off. Um, so we've been thinking about more as the one Pi. As it's, it's got a full Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 2 in there, so just log in a few power values, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a much more capable computer to do a lot more. So we're thinking about it as like the home, the home hub, kind of running, e easy to set up, but easily expandable to do more complex things if the, if, you know, if you, if, if the user wants to. Um, and as well, I say, it, yeah, by default it logs locally, but there's also the option to log to emoncms.org, our cloud-based server for um, remote, remote backup and remote access. So this is, uh, so we've been working with Martin uh, Hrizanov. This is kind of leading on, leading on from the MQTT to control side of things. Um, he's produced a, an MQTT uh, Wi-Fi relay that that we will be selling through the through the shop, and yeah, that's e easy to control via MQT, MQTT. And that uses the ESP8266 chip, and it's amazing what he's done with this chip. He's running a full web server off there with a nice little thermostat scheduling uh, UI that, that that Tristan wrote a few a few years back that Martin's taken. Um, and this this relay is really useful for Tristan will come on to, um, He's been recently installed the heat pump, um, be using the relay to be able to uh, control that. 
Uh, this was a slide I put together earlier just to explain to the Open TRV guys um, the standard MQTT topics that we use is Emon as the base topic, and then the topic names inform the Emon CMS feed names. So if you say posted Emon, then Emon TX and Power One, and then whatever value you are monitoring, um, that would result in a feed being input being made in Emon CMS called Emon TX and Power One. So if you wanted to post to the Emon topic and anything else like Emon um, forward slash temp upstairs for its last temperature and then your value that would just appear in even CMS inputs um, yeah to make it easier easy as possible you, so you can discuss if you're interested in getting um, one of these values into into another application all you need to do is subscribe to the topic that you're interested in um, and pull that data value data value out this was just an example of the use I've been making of MQTT on my EmonPy, got various publishers, EmonPy being one of them, my heating controller, opener hub all going in, um, and got node red sitting there in the middle. Uh, this was a real simple example of how we use uh, li the Lightwave RF, which is uh, to communicate with these Lightwave RF plugs. Um, so if you send a, send like a, a one to the light RF topic, that'll turn the plug on. You send a zero, it'll turn, turn, turn the plug off. And uh, all this is set up and pre-configured on the MumPy and work, works out the box to control, once paired with obviously, um, any light RF plugs. It's a really easy way to, um, to control um, appliances. And this was a, a screenshot from a demo I did last Tom has given this, this presentation at a tech talk up in North Wales. It's Christmas time, as you can see. And um, <laughs> my girlfriend was home at the time, and I was having, having good fun kind of switching the lights on and off just to um, demonstrate the light of RF plug control. And at the same time, showing the, the raw MQTT uh, data um, topics flying by. And the Emon CMS MyElectric app updating in real time. So I'm going to hand over to Tristan now who's uh, going to talk a bit about the heat pump um, application specific that he's been working on.